Hello, I'm Jim Carlucci, the editor of the Trenton Downtowner. Welcome to the third in our series of interviews with the city's business, civic, and cultural leaders. These are co-produced with Kevin Moriarty's Sky Dog Media. Today we're going to be talking with Carlos Avila. Carlos is a native of Ecuador who moved to Trenton with his family when he was five years old. He's a graduate of Trenton Central High School and the College of New Jersey. Not yet 30 years old, he's already got two political campaigns under his belt, and he's determined to lead a life of public service in Trenton, elected or not. Carlos has been very active with the Fix Trenton's budget group that's worked so hard to bring um, public input and timely planning to the city's financial situation. His interest in, in developing priority-based budgeting according to the expressed desires of taxpayers was a major feature of the group's work, and it's work that I might add uh, has resulted in the city having presented a proposed budget for the start of this fiscal year for the first time ever. That's so right. Car Carlos, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, let, let's start with that. Uh, you're, you're credited with bringing this concept of priority-based budgeting to the, to the forefront of this, and, and can you give us a brief explanation of what that is and where you learned about it? I uh, researched uh, how other cities did it. Uh, went from California to Texas to, to, to Maine. How did they do uh, budgeting? Small cities, urban areas, uh, post-industrial uh, cities like Trenton. And I found a couple models. And in three or four instances, uh, the majority of the models was priority-based budgeting. And so I, you know, I, I called the folks who authored priority-based budgeting uh, from the academic perspective and also uh, administrators who have used it. And I said, this could be something that really works. We went to the statutes to make sure that the city, uh, you know, the city uh, statutes support a, a process like this, and it certainly did. Um, and so we said, let's, let's, let's look more into it and let's put a, a plan together. And that's how priority-based budgeting became concepted here in the city when there's you know, such a structural deficit at the beginning of each fiscal year, how, you know, how did this come about? I think that that's part of the problem. I mean, it, it's twofold in my opinion. Uh, number one, uh, there's a lack of a process. Uh, there, it's reactionary. Our budget many times is reactionary. Um, it, we depend a lot on the state. Uh, so there's sort of a lot of time delay in the decisions that we can make as a city because we're wondering how much is the, city, is the state gonna give us. At the same time, there's also uh, a lack of a sound process where people can have input into. I think that there are very thoughtful people in the city, people who can help uh, the city ad administrate or to consider different options. And so I think that at the, you know, in 2012, we have a 9.3 million uh, hole. Uh, okay, we have less revenue coming in uh, and, and we have more expenses. So. What's being, Excuse me, and yeah. that's that's assuming we get a certain amount of state aid. Exactly. I mean, I, I mean, assuming all things considered, we we may have to do a two percent tax increase again, yeah. and so we're at, in a spot where yes, the, the economics, uh, the, the market, the uh, recession is taking a toll on cities like Trenton, where we have a, a tax base that is small. Uh, where we have businesses that are struggling, uh, where we have the biggest employer is the state and the municipal and, and, and the county government. And, and so I think that there are some challenges there. But to add to that, to sort of to that ill, is sort of the, the lack of, um, I wouldn't say transparency, but the lack of, of embracing different thoughts from the administration or even from just the, the culture of budgeting. And I think that we've made some inroads there. You've run for office twice. How would you have approached the city's financial situation had you uh, been elected? If, if I were on council, I think that I would really take seriously the input that folks had. Uh, and I would want to improve the process of priority-based budgeting. It's the first time. There are a lot of glitches. There are a lot of uh, ways that we can improve it in the upcoming years. But as a council member, I would champion uh, this priority-based budgeting process. It would be, I would have taken upon myself as a council member or as a citizen to research and see how, how does other cities do it and then explain to the public the tough choices that need to be made. A lot has been and continues to be made about the ethnicity of candidates for office in Trent. Many say that there never could or should be another Caucasian mayor. Some say it will be too difficult to elect a Latino mayor because the that part of the population is too fragmented and not a unified voting bloc. Is ethnicity an important qualification for a candidate in Trenton in the 21st century? That's a half hour question with him. So, <laughs> elections here in the city of Trenton, in my estimation, is uh, unfortunately less about policy uh, and, and, and substance and more about politics and organizing. And personality. And, and, and personality, absolutely. 
that has to change uh, before we can um, hope to elect uh, very, very substantial leaders in the city. Now, what, what, what I mean with that is that there has to be, there has to be candidates uh, that know how to organize, that have personality, but can also uh, govern. Uh, because, you know, one thing is to be a great campaigner, and, and another entirely different thing is to be a governor, a, a mayor, an administrator. With that said, I think that it's also important that people understand that. And so that when they go out to vote, they're not voting uh, for who has the best personality, but read their papers, read mm -hmm. their proposals. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not just about how many doors you can knock and how you can connect with people, or are you going to be able to give me a job? It's about, okay, what can you do for my, uh, for, for my economic development? What can you do for my taxes? The Latino community in the city uh, is the most rapidly growing uh, segment of the population in Trenton. It's reflected in ways as varied as the, the businesses owned by or catering to um, Latinos, um, increasing numbers of Latino students in our schools, um, churches that are focusing on the Latino community, even the sports played in our city parks. Is the growing impact of the Latino community in our economic life being matched by its presence in the political life? <clears throat> well, it, it's not. It obviously is not. But that's not that's a sort of, you, you, the Latino community has to reflect upon itself uh, to see what uh, the Latino community is doing wrong. Uh, but there's a lot behind that. First of all, the Latino community is mon not monolithic. Uh, you have a, a Latino who will vote for someone who is not Latino, but they uh, concur on an issue, whatever it may be. I, I think that the, the, the issue in terms of the Latino community is that there's a lack of a united agenda. Um, there, a community as, as, as growing, as promising as the Latino community, I mean, it, we grew 56% in the last 10 years here in the city of Trenton. We're 30,000 strong. What's the problem there? Uh, number one, we're not organized economically. Uh, the Latino community uh, has uh, a lot of businesses here in the city. But do those businesses talk? Uh, there's a Latino Merchants Association who I think uh, can do a lot of work in, in the economics and in the business uh, nature of, of the Latino community, but uh, there has to be an agenda. What are some two or three points that, that the Latino community wants to champion? Let's say uh, to advocate for immigration reform. That's a federal issue. You can have activism behind that, but here at home we need representation in City Hall and we need representation uh, at the Board of Education. Now why do we need representation? It's not just a, a racial thing, it's because the experiences and sometimes sort of the, the, the challenges are unique to the Latino community. While everyone in the city of Trenton will share, you know, we all don't like crime, we all don't like garbage around our front porches, but there are some things within the Latino community that are unique to them, uh, where you have, for example, families that are being broken apart because what the father's being deported. Uh, or you have uh, a, a kids who are U.S. citizens but their parents are not, therefore they can't qualify for financial aid at schools. So those things, you, there, there needs to be someone in City Hall, at the Board of Education, and different posts of authority that understands these things. Um, it doesn't have to be a Latino, but a Latino will be, be able to connect with that community a, a little bit more. Uh, and so certainly I think that there's, uh, that there's you know, when I grew up, uh, the folks who I used to look up was uh, folks like Pedro Medina. Uh, you know, oh man, when I was a kid, he was a police officer. He was sort of one of the only police officers that Latino. And I said, wow, this, you know, I want to be like him, someone that can stand up for something. And, and so I th from that aspect, I think it's also important uh, to get the community more involved. But like I said, it's, it's our job. Uh, no one can give that to, to the Latino community. We have to prepare ourselves, we have to strap our belts and say, this is how we're going to contribute. Do you think that um, Latino citizens are under-registered as voters uh, relative to their numbers? Uh, is, is, and, you know, part and parcel of that, non-citizens, do they speak to these issues? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have an influx of Latinos in the city of Trenton, but at the same time, a, a great majority of them uh, can't vote. Uh, either they are legal residents or they have a permanent residency status. Uh, some of them are undocumented, uh, but uh, out of those who can or are eligible to register to vote, uh, they do not. And that speaks to sort of my hope and, and my mission to make uh, policy relevant uh, to the people. When we were running for office, it, we, you know, every campaign does this, is look at the numbers, look at the power voters, uh, look at you know, who is more, most likely to vote. 
Um, and we were looking for the youth block, you know, to, to sort of bring out, uh, to see if that was a consideration where we should invest more resources. When we said, okay, let's look at from 20 to 30 Latino youth in, at that age range, there was one power vote. It was the candidate, myself. And, and when we saw that, we said, you know, this is critical. This is critical. And, and, and sort of our work after the election was to also, within the Latino community, get more people registered to vote, but also to come out and vote. Uh, and so in, in, in the most important elections that you had before the municipal, last municipal elections, only one Latino between the ages of 20 or 30 voted in every election is, is, a, is a consistent voter. Uh, and that's a problem. And, and that is not a problem of anyone else. That's a problem of the Latino community. Taking everything we've talked about uh, into account, do you see yourself staying in Trenton or will your call to serve take you elsewhere? But certainly, my family's here. I plan to raise my kids here. Uh, if job opportunities take me elsewhere uh, in, in the future, I'm going to law school right now. And, and so, you know, if, if I get to work in D.C. or if I get to work, uh, you know, as, as a representative of this country somewhere else, it's certainly something that you, you would consider. But for now, in the new future, uh, it's here in the city of Trenton, uh, working on things like the budget, uh, helping in things like, you know, city civic activism. Um, that's what we like to do. We've called to do that. And you may not know this, uh, but uh, we're very involved in, in our church. Um, and so we have a calling there also to not only uh, make uh, the, the good news of politics relevant to people, but the good news of the Lord relevant to people. And so, you know, we have a lot of work there to, still to be done, and we haven't even started yet. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're still tendered in that area. Well, Carlos, thank you for spending time with us today. Uh, we wish you a lot of luck with uh, your, your law school and uh, keep fighting the good fight here in Trenton. You've, you've already made a mark uh, for the citizens and, and, and for everybody, so we appreciate it. We're in it together. Thank you.